Today is the day I attempt to make potato chips in the rotisserie basket of my Instant Vortex Plus 7-in-1 air fryer. When I did my air fryer review a few videos back, I mentioned how one thing that I didn't like was if I tried to make potato chips, a lot of the chips would kind of just fly around the air fryer because there's so much air circulating. You know, everything would just kind of fly around and get stuck to each other and double, you know, layer up. And I was constantly having to open it and separate them and whatnot. So I got a comment on that video and someone said, put your chips in the basket. And it was like spelled wrong. And I was like, is this? Like, I thought it was just kind of a, wacky suggestion like, I don't know put them in the basket but then someone else commented the same thing and so I was like maybe there's something to this because if I have them in the basket first of all it's constantly rotating so it's getting a steady sort of even heat on all the chips and also maybe the sticking would not be as much of an issue because there's this constant movement so it would encourage them to separate. Like I said, I have made potato chips in the air fryer before. At that time, I did look up sort of just potato chip recipes in general, and I found that you are supposed to soak the slices in a cold water bath for ideally about 20 minutes, but you can soak them apparently up to overnight. That helps remove a lot of the starch so that they're a lot less likely to stick to each other. Going to be using a mandolin slicer. I actually just got this one. This is my first time using it. I was using the one that my mom has at her house, which is, it's kind of like this, but it doesn't have this grip part. And this grip part is huge. If you've ever used a mandolin, it can be pretty easy to slice your fingers. So I think a lot of people have mandolin anxiety, but this I think will really help with that. I also have another trick that I'll show you guys. This is just a really simple simple one made by OXO. I got it on Amazon. I'll put the link below. Basically, there's three different settings, one, two, and three. I believe that correlates to the millimeters uh, thickness. So I'm going to do it on two. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. It felt like nothing was slicing, but it is. Holy shit. This thing is so sharp. It literally doesn't even feel like anything's happening, but look at this. So as I slice them, I'm just gonna toss them right in the water. Okay, so let me show you my trick. If you just had a regular mandolin like this and you didn't have the grip, what I do, I like to take, you know, if you have smaller forks and bigger forks, I like to just take a smaller fork. So when I get, I'm a little over halfway here, but when I get about halfway, I don't even let it get to the point where my fingers are even close to the blade. I stick a fork like this and I just do this. So now it's like the fork has become my fingers essentially. And then when you get, you know, lower and lower down, you can, you can readjust it. That's a little tip from me because I don't want to take any chances, but let me try using this grip. The grip has these little pointy things that hypothetically grips onto the potato. So here we go. Yeah, it's working pretty well. Gosh, this thing works so much better than my mom's. I think the blade's a lot sharper. Another thing is when you're slicing, you wanna try to do even pressure the whole time. So don't, don't push down really hard in the beginning and then let up toward the end because that's what makes the slices uneven. Okay, <laughs> yeah, when you get to the point where this thing like hooks itself back on, I, I think you're done. I'll just show it on here. These are the thickness. They're a little, maybe a little bit uneven. I maybe slice them a little thicker on one side, but I think that's a good thickness. This water is already getting so cloudy and starchy. It's crazy how much starch comes off these potatoes. So I'm gonna let them soak for probably like 15 minutes. We'll give them a good rinse. We'll do dry them off really well, put a little oil, salt, throw them in the basket and hope for the best. Got my slices, I rinsed them off really well. And now I'm just gonna lay them out on the towel because now we need to dry them really well. I also recently got this back from my parents' house. This is the thing that unhooks the rotator basket. It's really nice to have this back. What I'm gonna do is grab a bunch of 
chips, well, chips to be, hopefully, and put them in my bowl. I'm gonna try to pick ones that are all relatively the same size. So I'm not gonna do like the real little ones or the bigger ones. It's like, oh, it's so hard to tell if these are dry enough. This is an experiment, guys, it might, it might fail. So I've got some slices in here. Again, really not that many. Just wanna kinda do a little test group and see what happens, but they're feeling very like dry and not like they're likely to stick together. So hopefully that's true. I'm going to use a little bit of avocado oil, get my tongs and just try to coat them really evenly. Also gonna do a little bit of salt. So now I'm just gonna take my basket and pop these in. this on make sure it's in lock mode I think I was for a while I was thinking that unlock mode was lock mode and so the basket was always opening and making a mess that's my fault I'm going to do it on air fry mode and I think I'm gonna do 375 for the temperature 375 is kind of my just go-to air fryer temperature 375 let's do like 10 minutes Start it. No beeping, as you may have seen in my recent short video. And then I'm just gonna hit rotate mode, and there it goes. This is just how I do things. This could be a mistake, but I never preheat the air fryer and then add the food. I always add everything and then I just add the food and then turn it on. It's probably not an air fryer best practice, but I'm just impatient and it heats up so quickly that I'm like, does it really make that big of a difference? See what happens. So the air fryer is still preheating, but I've already observed a lot of sticking happening. So I'm gonna give it a good shake and hopefully they've dried off a little. They're not like completely stuck together, but it definitely looked like if they kept going around like that, they would have been. So let me put it back in and see what happens. I don't know, I'm nervous. And here's how they came out. I actually was really pretty pleasantly surprised by the crunch, but then there were some that weren't really that cooked. So I took out the ones that I thought were done, and then with the rest, I peeled them apart if they were stuck together. Then I put them back in the air fryer for another few minutes. Here's how they came out after that. They're definitely on the verge of being burned, but they are a lot more crunchy throughout. Then I decided to re-soak the rest of the slices for about an hour, and then I let them dry for another hour so that I could be sure they were super dry and de-starched. I decided this time to brush on the avocado oil with a silicone brush because I wanted them to have some oil, but I didn't want them to be so oily that they just got sticky again. Then I salted them, threw them in the basket, and put them back in the air fryer. This time I used a new method that I'll talk about in a little bit, but it did require me to use a timer. And also to stop frequently and shake the basket. Hours and multiple attempts later, I think I finally got a pretty decent batch. This batch was achieved by using the recipe on Izzy Cooking, I think is the blog. She had a breakdown of how to make chips in an air fryer. She wasn't talking about a rotating basket, but just her method of cooking it at 300 for a while and then raising the temperature at the very end, I thought was a really good method to try to minimize burning. Ultimately, I think what happened with me is although I had the best intentions and was like, you gotta make sure that you, you slice the slices really evenly. I clearly didn't. And so what ended up happening was that a lot of chips kind of clearly on the thinner side, they got burnt and then on the 
thicker side, they're still a little soft. So the first batch I made was kind of like this. And when Paul tried them, he was like, I actually really like these. Like they kind of reminded me of gourmet potato chips. I'm like, yeah, gourmet potato chips. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Well, we'll call them that. The other thing is that, and this is not the fault of the air fryer or the recipe or anything, but the salt that I'm using, the, uh, grinder this particular grinder it produces really big salt grinds so they didn't stick to the chips that well every time i shook them the sort of pebbles of salt would just fall off so i don't think they come out tasting that salty but let me let me try one pretty good i would definitely say this is the best batch of the day again sort of wish they weren't soft at all in the middle but but, 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 I bought this at Whole Foods the other day. I was thinking ahead and then I totally forgot that I bought it. This is the Kite Hill French onion dip, which is unbelievably good. Definitely my favorite, one of my favorite vegan dips I tried. I think I put it on my list of uh, best vegan products of 2020. Of course, I didn't check the date. It's only got a few days. It actually expires on my birthday. I'm gonna do a little chip test with this dip. Pretty good. It's good. Obviously, I wish that the consistency was consistent throughout. You know, you wouldn't really be able to save these because they're still a little wet. But that was my video. I started filming this at a little before 11 a.m. and it's now 3.45. Was not expecting it to take this long. Given that I thought that this method would be a solution to the problem I was having where I couldn't make that many at once, or I constantly had to monitor them. It's definitely not a fix for that, especially with the last method I used, which was, which was the most successful, you had to stop and shake them, you know, four times throughout the cooking process. So I don't know if there's any sort of easy, you know, don't even have to think about it way to cook a lot of chips at once, other than obviously using a deep fryer, but even then you can get sticking issues. But it's progress and I am willing to keep trying because if I could just make my own chips at home, my own flavors, whatever I want, that would be amazing. I definitely learned a lot. This was a trial and error process. It wasn't perfect, but I appreciate you sticking along for the journey. I hope you guys learned something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe for more videos from me and I'll see you next time. Bye.